there's a lot of politics in science. So that science, we ask, you know, when I started this work, I really came up from the point of view that science is, is true. And, you know, there's this question, can we actually look for truth? Because we have a lot of bias in how we interpret things, and everything really goes along the continuum, not, not so black and white. Is science pure? And does morality or our convictions um, drive our research? And you'd be amazed, but when you, when you think about heated topics like nursing, like abortion, um, like anything that people really care about passionately, you will find that the science by the scientists is not so pure. Okay, so now then you have that the media is going to take that and do with it what it will. So it becomes a very complicated process. And one in which the people whose voice is loudest is heard the most. And I always get this question, where does your funding come from, they ask me. <laughs> but there's important questions about where funding comes from whenever you start looking at um, uh, issues of science. And it just shows just how, many, how much politics really are included in science. So let me give you another example. Let's hope this one works. I thought I'd live forever. I was dumbfounded when the doctor told me I have late stage colon cancer. Deciding between surgery and radiation wasn't easy. Who knows what sort of side effects I'll have. It's been really tough on my husband, my kids, and me. Cancer affects the whole family. Cancer risk starts early. Even small amounts of process <coughs> roots can lead to adult <coughs> cancers. Okay, so that was sponsored by the Cancer Project Org. <laughs> Which was actually um, uh, uh, it was actually paid for um, by a group of physicians, and CNN did a report on this. They pointed out that the ad was sponsored by the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. So these are doctors, and they noted this was an animal rights group that wants us all to be vegans. And I only point out that they said this to suggest that the organization was not as mainstream as other doctors' organizations. Um, however, with that caveat, they went on to affirm the link between processed meats, nitrates in particular, and cancer. And they cited research from the American Institute for Cancer and uh, the American Cancer Society. And they said outright, that one hot dog a day causes an increase by 21% of cancer. So I'm really in trouble. <laughs> um, so what didn't they report? And, and, I, and I, by the way, am not trying to say that this is an incorrect point of view. What I want to, uh, what I really want to point out is what, um, is how, how the reporting itself can really lack um, a wholeness to it. That they're not talking about consensus anymore. They're talking about what one organization and a small one believes. And in particular, the American Medical Association, which is much more mainstream and much larger than the Association for um, Responsible Physicians, I'm sorry I said their name wrong, they did a literature review and they found that the epidemiological studies cannot confirm any association between the presence of nitrates or nitrites in food and the formation of NOCs and the causation of human cancer. So this was a really significant finding, which at least would think would merit mention in a CNN coverage where millions of people are, 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 are watching. And uh, the AMA also published a letter in the New York Times dismissing the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and saying their tactics were unethical. They had had a history, apparently, of doing some other um, unsavory advertisements. And it turns out, um, for those of you who are interested, that this cancer process meat link has not been shown to be statistically significant. There's a lot of confounding factors, particularly recall bias, which is to say that people who get cancer tend to paint a pretty ugly picture of what they did. You know, I'm guilty. I <laughs> ate a hot dog.